most common question I get asked about my touchscreen Lowrance is, is how do you use it? Is it more user friendly than the other HTSs? And what are the what are the ins and outs with it? So I sort of sit here, sit here today, run through powering it on, doing waypoints, those sorts of things. So I'll start with turning it on. Simple one button press. So once it loads up, it comes up with your typical warning of acknowledging your GPS. Just press accept. Now the, the first point to notice is when you first turn it back on, it starts up with the screen you last had it on. So I last had it on GPS sonar split. Changing pages is quite easy. So if I just want to run plain sonar, press this little button up here. Go to your sonar page. Full screen of sonar. Similarly, structure or chart. There you go. So notice a plus and minus down here. Zooming in, zooming out. Got plus and minus up there. Zooming in, zooming out. Both do the same. Go back to this page. Got shortcuts for screens. Drag it out. You can actually customise and add your own. For example, let's make our own. Add. You drag the panels that you want. So I want to add sonar, chart, structure. So it's got the three like that. So I want structure to be my main one. Drag it across that way. There you go. Save. There it is. Click one touch. There's our screen that we just found. Go back to a two screen split. So you, you may notice there's an orange band around the active window. So that one there's the active window. Touch this one, that one there's the active window. So when you're on the active window, you've got plus or minus to zoom in or out on that one. Or on that one the same. With your menu, Menu's up the top right corner. You want menu for the structure. Active window. There's all that stuff. There's an added window up the top. You can drag down. There's all your controls. Frequency, contrast, palette colours. Similarly, if you push that, now you can control link. Now you've got your menu for the sonar. And <laughs> Mark's on. <laughs> He's not a bad fish either. Yeah. <laughs> Good work. There we go. Look at that. Nice little Aussie bass. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Sensitivity adjustments are a pretty important thing when you're chasing bass. If you go to your active screen, sensitivity, you can leave it in auto, or you can go up or down, a couple of settings. Obviously the further you go down, you lose all your fish, come back up. You see more fish, but you end up with a bit of clutter, but that's okay. So I generally run an auto plus two. It's up to personal choice, colour palettes. On the structure scan, I like to run blue. A lot of other guys run a different colour. As you can see here, a lot of fish, easy to see. So with palettes, I think there's nine palette choices. Best menu, palette. Quickly you can change through any colours you want, see what they look like. Different people, a lot of people like number six. Pretty clear, you can still see them. I'll still run with the blue, bit of a habit. One good function I like about the, the touch, is the standby function. Power button once, you've got brightness. We've got standby. So put it in your standby, won't flatten my battery, but to reboot it, it's pretty quick. Push it again, there we go, back up to normal. It's also a neat function, you can scroll back, so this is an active window moving across, just grab it, cursor, you just drag it back, go back and see something a fair way back. First lot of fish there, put my cursor on it, press the flag, save a waypoint, back where I was before. Typical way to create a waypoint rather than do it the way I just did little flag on the side of the screen, push that once, you can choose different icons if you want, you can change the name, Mark's boat, we'll say Mark, press enter, C 
save. There you go. Waypoint mark created. You can also do a screen capture. If you push the power and the pages up the top at the same time, see the trees pause, it says screen capture down the bottom. To access that, go to that button, files, my files, screenshots, there we go. Press close, another one there. So you can view them, see what we're looking at. So big tree on an edge. Go back to normal. So we'll go back to a two screen split. One thing a lot of people are worried about with a touch screen is what happens when I get water on the screen? Will it still work? So you catch a fish, you get wet fingers, those sorts of things, cut wet hands, put it on the screen, doesn't affect the screen. So clear cursor, you can see there's water all over that. It still works normally. So you can go to your menu, change the frequency, do whatever you want. As you can see, water all over that screen, still touch there. Doesn't bother it at all. There you have it.